let's go over the uh, answers to the breakout problem briefly. Um, in these three data challenges, there's a lot of material for going over, so we're just going to look at one part of it, but I hope that those of you who are interested in learning more data analysis with SciPy, you will look over these uh, notebooks in a bit of detail, and by all means, ask questions. Uh, I'm available by email as well. Okay, so um, the solution to the exercise fitting a curve to data is outlined in these first three cells, but there's obviously a lot of commands in those three cells, so I'm going to talk through each one, uh, and we'll uh, understand exactly what's happening. I made available on the website, later than I should have, but it's there now, the data file that you need for this exercise. So let me just... Okay, so the first line uh, uses the gen from text, which is one of the NumPy library, which loads generic text files. There are many ways to do this, and I, I saw several people using different ways to do this, and so this is the way I've done it here. And what it does is load a structure called data, which has uh, values of the text in it. So let's just run this quickly. So if I strip out this last command, this is what I should have done. There we go. So let's have a look at what's in that, okay? So what this has done is load that flat file into an array called data. Let's look at the shape. It's 25 by three, so 25 data points, three columns. So the columns are the X values, the Y values, and the error bars. So if I, all I'm doing with this second line is picking out the columns from that data. So I'm taking all rows, the column, zero, yes? Yes, yes, I, I didn't want to put the answers up initially, but uh, yeah. And for those who are, know where the GitHub repository is, you can also grab all of this information that way. Um, okay, and so this third command is using matplotlib to plot using the error bar plotting. So I've plotted x, y, the error bars. The line is just to guide the eye. All, all the data are, are these points with error bars. Okay, and so the goal of this exercise is to fit a function to these data points, and that's what the next cell is doing. So, blank all of these out. So we import, we're gonna use fmin to optimize uh, to do the fitting, okay? And so, as I outlined on the slide at the start of the breakout, there are two functions, two steps to this. The first thing we do is we define a function that is the model we wish to fit. Again, I say there are many ways to do this. This is my preferred method. We're defining a function as a lambda function, so I gave in the lecture slides the model that we were looking to fit. It has this functional form and has one free parameter, p. So I've made a lambda function. So if I call this function with uh, uh, value five, say, it returns an array, okay? And so what it's done is it's taken the x values of the data and produces a curve that has this model with overall amplitude given by that, that parameter. Does that make sense? You understand why it's returning an array? Okay. And so the idea in model fitting generally is that when you have a bunch of data, perhaps with error bars, and you have a model which has some parameters that you wish to fit, you wish to optimize the choices of those parameters such that the difference between the model curve and the data with the error bars is minimized. And so to achieve that, we define a goodness of fit function, which in astronomy is almost always referred to as a chi-squared function for no especially good reason. And again, I'm defining this as a lambda function. And what it is, is it's the difference between the y values, that's the data, the values of the function given the model and the parameter choice divided by the error bar. So this is the standard goodness of fit function, so it's the sum of the squared differences between the model and the data weighted by the error bar. Given, so this again defines a function that takes in a parameter, and for a particular choice of parameter, gives me an estimate of the goodness of fit. And so in this case, low goodness of fit is what we are looking to achieve. And so the last step, those are some different values, given the parameter choice, is to optimize this goodness of fit function over the parameter space. 
So fbin takes the function we wish to optimize and a starting point. Okay, so I run that. I can do this. And it does the optimization. It returns the value of the parameter that optimizes the fit and returns some other information. And fbin has plenty of things going on at the hood that you can also access. And so then this last step, I'm just uh, plotting the data again and also the model function as a dashed line. The model function here is represented as the black dashed line. So that's the best fit model to these data. Okay, and so that is uh, the task that I wish to demonstrate here. Okay, so are there any questions about that before we move on? Beth. Just get what? Okay. Um, when you said you looked at the help for fmin, were you looking online or were you looking in the ipython terminal? Okay. So I, I think that's fine. Um, I just wanted to point out there are there's a development version of SciPy which is not what is shipped with the N4 Python distribution. What is shipped is the last stable release, and there's differences in the optimization routines. So if you upgrade to the most recent version of SciPy, fmin has different behavior. More confusingly, the, like, the most prominently displayed documentation on the SciPy website is for the latest version, not the version that we will normally have installed. So you need to be careful if you're looking at the SciPy docs on the website to select the version that we have. Anyway, that's not... Beth's question was, even within... Uh, if I do this... So fmin returns a whole bunch of stuff, and yet if I put in like a equals fmin, I'm generally just getting a single thing. Yeah. Um, it could be there's a flag that you need to call if you want all of this stuff back. Let's try. Let's try just type fmin. Is, is your question, how do you access all of that stuff? Yeah. Um, there might be like a parameter you have to put. Here we go, something like one of these. Does anyone, does anyone have a quick solution to that? Full output? Parameter. Well, let's exactly let's try specifying that keyword and see what happens. <laughs> so now there's a few more parameters. Thanks. Uh, there was another question, perhaps. No, apparently it's the same question. Okay. Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry, thank you. Yes. Um, it sounds like you're putting an array as an argument to admin. Right, so, so we're we're looking at the data saying that to be low text. And uh -huh. then so X is a So optimization optimizes a function. And so you need to define a function from that data that you wish to optimize. And so in the answer notebook, which I, I will put online, and what I went through over quickly here was how I converted that input data into the function I actually wish to optimize. See, this, this is a function. I could have used like define this function. You've done that? I see, okay, sorry, thanks. Um, I'll have to go and have a look at it. 